Good morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living Father, we want to thank you once again for giving us this opportunity to share and listen to your words, uh, to your word this morning. We pray, Father, that you are going to meet the needs of every one of us who is here. Allow us to sit still. Hold our minds captive, O oh Lord, and make our hearts receptive. As I speak, O oh Lord, I pray that you may use me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Mary Como, and uh, this morning I'm blessed of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm excited that he has uh, given us an opportunity to share his word. And I'm also happy to see you. I know the sacrifice of waking up in the morning uh, on such a cold morning. It takes God and I wouldn't take it for granted that you are here. We thank God for you. You have made a decision to serve him uh, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind. And it is a great thing to do. Uh, this morning, uh, I, I got a conviction that uh, I just come and uh, put some emphasis on uh, what we learned last week during the revival week. We had a guest speaker here uh, who took us through a series of um, our teachings and uh, I, I, I trust that you've been able to access the links he, he, that they are quite insightful Get the links, uh, the, the sermons are available online. Kindly uh, get to, to, to listen. And just uh, to highlight some of the things that he said, the theme was deep rooted. That was the theme of the whole week. That a Christian needs to be deep rooted uh, in his, in their faith. And uh, we shouldn't. We just, you know, survive on, uh, you know, the service, being shallow and all that. We need to get deep uh, in our faith. And he highlighted gen five general, five general um, benefits of, you know, that you get as a Christian when you are deep rooted. And he said that once you are well grounded in your faith as a Christian, one, the first one benefit is that you'll have stability. You will be stable in your faith. You'll not be swayed by whatever wind uh, comes your way. You will not uh, be affected by alien cultures that uh, we are, you know, grappling with uh, in our society as Christians. You will be stable. You will stand firm. The other benefit is that you will have knowledge, knowledge of the word of God. You will know what is right and what is wrong. You will not embrace anything that is drawn to your side. And that, that benefit, he said, is growth. That you'll grow. You'll not remain a stunted Christian. You will have, you know, gradual growth as, as you as you remain a Christian. And uh, the fourth thing, if I remember, is that you'll bear fruit. The third, I think that the fourth, you'll bear fruit. I think there were six, there were six, not five. You'll bear fruit, and people, when people look at you, they can see this is a Christian. There's something, there's something coming from him. And then the other one was that you'll have power and authority. You'll not be controlled by emotions, by whatever else is around you. You will be able to take charge. You'll be resilient. You'll be 
one person who is focused on what you're doing, you'll be able to weather whatever storms come your way. And he also said that you'll have freedom. Freedom from all manner of addictions, all manner of things that are happening around us. And we, there are many. We can spend a whole day talking about the various addictions that are affecting uh, Christians. Freedom from sin, freedom from Satan, freedom from strife, freedom from deception. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time. And the culmination was last Sunday. So um, I ask you to get time to listen. And how I'm going to tie that to what we are saying today is I, we, I, we picked that uh, the first reading, Genesis Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14, just as an illustration of how when you're not deep-rooted, we can buy anything. Anything can be sold to us. That reading that we know very well, and it has been used by many, many preachers over and over again, uh, and especially modern uh, preachers that have some, to a greater extent, have twisted the gospel so that uh, it is served the purposes that they want. One of the interpretations that are, has been given when we are talking about the modern health and wealth gospel, we know it, the prosperity gospel. This has been taught that if we claim what we want in Jesus' name, we will get it. That has been the gospel, you know, the modern. That whatever it is that we want and we claim it, then we will get it. Like you have seen in the, you know, blessings for obedience. And this has been, you know, passed around and people just see that one meaning. That if we do certain things, God will bless us and give us wealth, and give us success, and freedom from hardships. We are going to live one comfortable life. And if we don't do some things, then he won't. Which suggests that our relationship with God, economically speaking, is a sort of, uh, you know, a reciprocal arrangement of goods and services that you, you, um, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Or something like, uh, if you do this to me, then I'll do this. Which actually is a, a misrepresentation of, of God. He doesn't operate like that. When he spoke these words in Deuteronomy chapter 28, he wasn't really, it is not something that we can just pick, you know, copy and paste and think that because he said, you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. And just take that literally. He was specifically speaking to the people of Israel. As a community, as a nation, he was not speaking to individuals. This was uh, meant for them. And it may not exactly apply to us. So what I'm saying is, we need to be deep rooted. We need to have knowledge so that we know when someone preaches to us that do this and God will do this for you. Our God is not in the business of uh, being manipulated. We cannot um, um, twist, you know, God so that we get what we want. And we, we sh you should not allow ourselves to uh, be made to believe that happiness will come from having what we want. No, that is not the case. That is not the reality on the ground. The reality on the ground is that our God remains faithful. And he still rewards faithfulness. He still rewards um, our commitment to him. He's not this kind of an old man who is sitting somewhere looking at how we are going to behave, how much you are going to put in that basket. 
he's not a poor father. The kind of impression that some of us preachers have created. And we shall be able, we shall be able to detect the wrong teachings if we get deep rooted, if we get to know the knowledge of God, if we get to know what this book says, if we invest time and our lives into reading the word of God, that we should be proactive. Let us go, let us take time to find out what does the book say? What does this whole book say? And we can only do that if we allow ourselves to grow. It is true that when Israelites did what the Lord had asked them to, God blessed them. Doesn't mean that their bank accounts were filled with dollars or something like that. The kind of thing that we hear uh, out there in this modern uh, health and wealth gospel. And there are many ways that God has blessed us even today, this morning. That is why we are here. We all know that we have been struggling with the uh, epidemic. And the fact that you are here this morning can only mean one thing, that the Lord has preserved you, the Lord has protected you. Whether you uh, got infected and, and, and got healed, that it takes God. The fact that you know the essence of being in the presence of the Lord, that is a great blessing. There are many young people out there who are fighting, who are saying that there is no God. The fact that God has uh, tuned your mind to know that, to know the wealth, to know the prosperity that is found when you involve God in your life, that on its own is a great blessing. The fact that you have parents, you have siblings, and all those other things. The fact that you are going, you are going through college, and you have, you're almost clearing, or you have cleared, or you have found a job, do you know how blessed we are? But those preachers just want to uh, direct our minds to think that the only way to feel blessed is when you are driving that car, is when you live uh, in that part of town, is when you get this kind of a girl, or this, you know, the misrepresentation of facts. So let us learn to, uh, to get to know the word of God. Let us get deep rooted so that all the deception, all manner of deceptions, we are not going to become victims. And we will continue growing and we shall, um, we shall also bear fruit. And we will also be able God will give us power and authority to even step and deal with all, all the things that because we must agree that we are living in a, a fallen world, you know, very twisted and all manner of things happening. So in the new covenant, now in the new covenant where we talk of Jesus, he does the, the kind of gospel, there's a lot of suffering and this brings a lot of confusion to uh, Christians that haven't read the word well. You wonder why, if, if God is good, why is there so much suffering? But the new covenant doesn't tell us that we won't suffer. Even Jesus himself suffered. His uh, disciples, the apostles suffered. Paul suffered a lot. What he promises and that is why we need to read, is that even in that suffering, I am going to be with you. My grace will be sufficient. He did not say that you are going to have a free walk in the park and you can just get whatever you want. It is not like that. What he promises is that troubles are here, and there are many, but I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll always be there. Even in that pain, I'll be with you and I'll guide you and I'll protect you in his own way, in his own way, not necessarily in our own way. That his grace will be uh, sufficient. And so let's not be misdirected. Let's not be misled. Let's follow the correct doctrine so that 
Like Paul, we saw with Paul in the New Testament, the book of uh, Acts, chapter 28, from verse 17. Paul knew the word. He knew the word. You have seen him. We are told that he took time preaching. And the, the Jewish leaders had no choice but to respect him. Remember, while he was doing this, it was, he was not... Uh, in one of those five-star hotels. He was in prison. He was in chains. But he kept preaching because he knew the word. He, he, he was not intimidated. He did not allow himself to be misled. He did not allow himself. These people are more on the other side. And this is what they are saying. He knew the word very well. And that is why he was able he was able to, 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 as we saw in the text, he was able to start farm and preach the right, the, uh, the, the right gospel. So I'm saying, let us learn the word. How do we learn the word? There are programs that are available. And I know some of you are, in, are like a program in Bible study fellowship, which is free and available. It is free and available. We have classes for young adults. We have classes for adults. Why don't you enroll? It is free. No school fees required. All you need to do is make yourself available. Maybe once, once a week and for an hour or two. And during the week you spend time uh, reading texts that are very well you know, guided. And you get to know. I've been in such a program for now, I think going to 15 years. I, I, I am not sure how many, but it's around 14, 15 years, non-stop. I have read the word and I cannot say that I know it very well. I'm still discovering new things. Currently, those who are in it like uh, Vincent, we, they know that we're doing the book of Genesis. And I think this is the third or so time that I am doing Genesis. And what I found amazing is that I'm discovering things I've never seen. I'm hearing voices that I've never. The word of God is something mysterious. It is, it, we can't even explain. I've done Genesis. This week we are doing Genesis 37 and 38. And it's amazing how God reinvents. I, I think he, he, there is always something new. And I've been at it for such a long time. And I have no intentions of stopping. So we need to be intentional about this. It will not just happen. Find out. Find out so that you are well deep, you know, you're deep rooted, well grounded in the word of God. So that you can be like Paul. And you'll be able to avoid the danger that is out there. Because I can tell, and you know it. I don't need to overemphasize the fact that, especially the young people are endangered when they are out there. There's so much going on. There's so much going on that is wrong. And we need to hide ourselves uh, in the shadow of our Lord. We need to run to the, you know, to God so that he can guide our steps. So if I may ask as I wind up, do you want to be like Paul? Do you want to be that vessel as a youth Christian so that you can learn the word of God and teach it and speak about it confidently? That, then if the, the answer is yes, there is a way. There is a way like I've shared that there are programs that you can join. Are you a stunted Christian? When you look back, is there some, you know, evident growth? Do you think there is growth? Do you think there is what you knew five years ago? Uh, there, there is that improvement. You feel more confident speaking of uh, the word of God. Do you start a risk of being misled? Those people who say there is no God, I don't know why they fight about it. If they know it and they believe it, why do they argue? Why do they 
debate about it. You see, you know there is God and you believe it. So you don't have to convince anyone. It, it, it is something that you believe in. And they are there. And we, we, we feel for them. We pray that their eyes will open so that they know the truth. Are you, do you start that risk of being misled, being swayed away? If you don't feel very confident, then let us learn the word of God. Because our Lord is gracious, he's patient, he's compassionate, and when we put an effort, he knows and is willing to help us, to walk with us. He knows that we are human and we sometimes don't do the right thing. And he's just willing, he's eager to walk with us. And so during this Lenten season, as we continue uh, to focus on our Christian uh, journey and our faith, has your spiritual well-being, you know, how is your spiritual well-being? Have you grown? Do you think you are growing? Maybe we need to do an audit of ourselves, myself included. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us so that we can invest in him as he continues investing in us. Amen? Let us pray. Thank you. Thank you once again, dear Father, for reminding us that we need to be deep-rooted because there are so many benefits. There are so, so many. And we need that now more than ever before. Thank you for these young people that came because they felt that they needed to be in your presence. Lord, you know them. Personally, you know them at that personal level. It is my prayer that you'll walk with each one of them. Those that do not know what to do, they haven't acquired stability. Lord, would you give them? Those that don't know where to begin studying your word, Lord, you know what to do. And those who may be suffering from some form of deception and they are in some addictions and all manner of things, Lord, rescue them. You are the only one who can do that. And as we go into the week, Lord, prompt our hearts, our hearts prompt our minds, Lord, to do something about this message that you have given us this morning. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.